I just started recording, so you can feel free okay. to start whenever you're ready. <clears throat> okay. It's hard to tell how many people are in the meeting, but uh, that's okay. I think there's uh, four people other than us right now. Pardon me? There's four uh, people four. other than us right now. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, uh, to begin with, uh, my name is Rashad Shashakli. I'm the supervisor for Ping Pong Propulsion. Uh, welcome to everybody that can attend. Uh, all of this uh, video chat stuff is a little new to me, so you'll have to bear with me. Um, the uh, This is, in my opinion, one of the more fun events because it's a little bit, uh, a lot of activity that goes on during our event. Uh, the purpose is to create a device uh, that, that launches ping pong balls at a target, uh, 15 ping pong balls to be exact. Uh, and uh, in essence, the highest score uh, wins uh, wins the competition. Uh, the number of people, the, the number of participants on the team can be one or two. Uh, I believe we allow more when we do the um, the uh, kind of the test sessions. Uh, if they intend on doing any of those, I heard possibly there might be one in the in the in the making, uh, but I haven't heard uh, that that's absolute yet. Um, and anyway, uh, it needs to, the, the machine that you build has to be accurate, built accurately enough so that you can get consistent uh, measurements and be able to predict uh, how far the ping pong ball goes based on a prescribed distance. Uh, those, those distances vary anywhere from four meters uh, to eight meters in half meter increments. Um, and so whatever data you acquire uh, which I'll go into later, uh, you only need to keep the data that, that will allow you to hit those half meter targets, depending on what you build uh, and how you collect that data. Uh, preferably, uh, obviously, the, the machine should be built by the students, uh, although a little assistance from mom and dad is, is allowed. Uh, if, for example, you need to use power tools and you're not comfortable letting your, your uh, elementary school kids use power tools, uh, but the whole, the, the whole purpose of the event is to allow them to come up with the idea, construct it, and kind of uh, use that as a learning process. Uh, as far as materials, um, there are no physical uh, or material uh, restrictions or size restrictions on the machine. It can be, it should be set on some sort of a base uh, with some soft feet on the bottom. That's to uh, keep the device from scratching the gymnasium floors, which was an issue before. And that will be checked on each device as it's checked in. So make sure that that happens. Um, the, uh, as I said, the materials can be anything. It can be wood, plastic, metal, uh, cardboard, however you, whatever you choose. And you can have all kinds of other components, hinges, what, what have you, uh, to build this thing. Um, it should, uh, the only thing we, we ask is that you not use uh, uh, dangerous uh, things like uh, lead acid batteries or uh, compressed, uh, uh, any kind of a compressed fuel. Uh, electricity is allowed uh, only through the use of, say, alkali batteries or something like that, you know, like typical Duracells or whatever. There will not be uh, electricity, a plug-in uh, source uh, available to any of the students uh, uh, because we're shooting basically up to eight teams at a time. Um, the, uh, the balls that you use are standard issue 40 millimeter ping pong balls. Um, and they can be loaded on the machine either singly or uh, all at once. Uh, a, a word of caution, if you're, you, if you're building a device that shoots a ping pong ball through a tube, uh, whatever tube that you choose, uh, take the ping pong ball with you when you buy it because the outer diameter of a 40 millimeter ping pong ball we discovered does vary and in the original uh, the, the first time we ran the, the program, uh, some of the kids found out that their ping pong balls got stuck in the barrel. So verify that when you size, uh, if you're using some sort of a barrel type uh, uh, device. Um, 
let's see. Um, that, okay, all of the devices, the ping pong balls themselves, and the data charts that you're going to be required to uh, make, uh, and uh, you will have to have two copies, one uh, that you give to the supervisor on check-in when we impound, and the other you keep with your device so that the kids know how to set up their device for a particular distance. Uh, those are, uh, they're all, uh, all three of those, or pardon me, the, 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 the machine and the data chart uh, requires that you put your team name and number on it. The, the balls are required to have the team number in two locations on each ping pong ball. Uh, and also uh, note that you want to underline uh, any sixes and nines because it makes it far easier for us uh, to know what team we're dealing with when you underline those numbers for obvious reasons. Um, the number of ping pong balls uh, per team is 15. There are 10 white, four orange, and one orange with a stripe. The white ones are the least valuable. The orange with the stripe is the most valuable. Um, and uh, if you use a permanent marker like a Sharpie, the, the numbers should stay on there uh, pretty well without smearing and make our job easier. I would also put the, ball, the ping pong balls in a clear plastic container so it's easy for us to um, count and verify that you have not more than you required because you're only allowed the maximum 15 uh, during the shoot. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Looking over during impound, uh, there's there's a window of time where you can bring your device and all everything you need to to run your device, to impound it before you are actually called to shoot. Um, you don't want to be late because you're penalized 20 points if you are. Um, and uh, as part of the impound, other than the launcher, the, the ping pong balls, any tools you might need, you also need to have your your, your uh, your data chart to present to uh, the check-in crew, and also have the one copy that goes with your launcher. Any tools that you require should also be uh, checked in at that time, um, along with any goggles. Uh, it's mandatory that the kids use goggles uh, when they shoot, uh, not so much because a ping pong ball is gonna hurt you, but we've had a few devices kind of come apart and launch themselves across the gym and uh, we don't want any potential for injury. So that will be a, a strictly enforced requirement. If you're using goggles for another event, uh, we will note if you can't check it in for, for ping pong until the, the, the team arrives for their shoot, but they still must have those goggles when they, uh, before they're allowed to enter the arena to, to, to do their launch. Um, the practice log, uh, it can be basically it's 11 by 17 format. Um, and basically what you're trying to do is record whatever parameters allow the, the team players to figure out how to set up their machine based on what distance we give them for the shoot that day. So they may, uh, they may use distance. Obviously, they're going to be dis the, given the distance to the target. So that's one parameter. Uh, the, uh, if they're using some sort of a, a, a need to elevate the device, uh, either the angle of the device uh, or the height off the floor, uh, how, what kind of a rubber band, if they're using rubber bands, or how long the, uh, the, the source of energy is. Um, and anything else you might need to record on them. You can use multiple sheets or single sheets. Um, the neatness and complexity of, of those data sheets, uh, I would do it as neatly and, and carefully as you can. Uh, the more effort you put into it, the better off you'll be uh, because we utilize the data sheets uh, to break any ties that we cannot do numerically. It's uh, amazing in the two or three years that we've done this, we found that we had uh, numeric ties we could not break, so we had to come up with a more subjective way, which is through the data charts. Um, the target itself uh, is comprised of two parts. There's a pool, which is about four to five feet in diameter, uh, whether you're looking at the inside or the outside diameter of the pool, it's about 
little over a foot high. And then there's a five gallon pail in the middle. Um, any, any ball, any ping pong balls that are shot uh, that hit the pail are marked higher than if they go into the pool. Uh, so the more accurate you can be, uh, if you can get to that pail, you get a higher score. Anything that falls outside the pool is basically dead, won't be counted. Um, the, uh, so that's that. there's also a, a pad of foam in the bottom to kind of dampen uh, a little bit of the bouncing that might occur with the balls bouncing, going into the pool and coming back out again. Um, the, uh, now with regard to how far away we are, when we will have up to eight teams shooting and there are basically eight sets of two lines that uh, are marked on the floor around the gymnasium. And when we set the teams up, they'll they'll march to the the farthest line uh, away from uh, their assigned location uh, in front of the target, where they just sit and wait for the the uh, uh, the go ahead to start shooting. Um, basically, they can't set up; they just sit there and wait for that authorization. Once we say go, they move up to the uh, closer line, which is the actual distance to the target that they've been assigned, and all teams will be assigned the same distance. Um, and they set up, knowing that distance, they set up their machine and they start firing, at which point they have basically four minutes to fire all 15 uh, ping pong balls. There's no, uh, there's no requirement to do white ones first or the stripe one first. They can do it in any order they want. Um, uh, so once that once things start going, though, it's you have eight teams shooting ping, uh, 15 ping pong balls. There's balls flying everywhere. There's all kinds of chaos, uh, which makes the event more fun. We get kind of random bounces in and out, balls hitting each other, causing, uh, uh, you know, bad bad bounces but that's all that's all part of the uh, part of the game and the excitement um the let's see where are we at here all right oh uh when they are shooting all parts of the device the the two team players uh the, anything they have used uh, for the device the balls and everything must remain by behind the shooting line uh, when they do that, and we'll have observers uh, keeping an eye on that. You know, because sometimes the machines have a tendency to creep across the line, uh, so we try to remind them uh, to keep uh, keep a check on that. Although in the in, in the excitement, that, that doesn't always happen. So we're there to help. Uh, also, if we feel any of your devices are dangerous or the kids are behaving in a dangerous fashion. Uh, we will uh, warn them the first time, um, but that might be grounds for disqualification if that behavior uh, continues or, or if we feel the device is a danger to everybody else. Um, when they are shooting, if they accidentally shoot a ball um, and it crosses the line and doesn't make it to the pool, uh, if, it's accident you know, if it's an accidental firing, that ball is dead, they can't touch it. But if the ball stays behind the line uh, with an accidental fire, they're welcome to pick that ball up and shoot it. So that ball would count. Um, uh, judges and uh, parents are very strongly encouraged to be cheering their teams on, but we, we would prefer that they not coach from the sidelines once they're in their shooting. Um, uh, basically, they're on their own. Uh, so we, we would ask that the enthusiasm be uh, restricted to cheering your team your team on more than anything else. Uh, scoring is done uh, basically once the shoot is done, we ask the kids to pick up all the balls that are on the floor only. Uh, we take over the collection of the balls uh, from the bucket first. They're scored by team, and then we go retrieve the balls from the pool. Those are scored. Um, and, uh, and entered onto our score sheets, uh, at which point at the end of the event, uh, when all the teams have scored, we send them up for tabulation on the computer. It's too, there's no way we can actually give you a score because of the weighted multipliers uh, assigned to each ball type. 
and where they land. Uh, we couldn't do that on the fly. It would just be, it would take too long. Uh, the pale uh, basically is, is a 25 point multiplier. So if you have a white ball, that's the least valued, it's multiplied by 25. An orange ball uh, uh, counts three times more and the striped ball is five times more on that, on that 25 uh, count multiplier. And if you're in the pool, uh, it's, it's a nine point uh, multiplier. Um, so uh, also, if you do hand in your practice log, you are automatically given an extra 50 points. So it behooves you, one, to turn in your data treat and also not be late for impound because that, again, is the 20-point uh, deduction from your point score, which might make or break whether you, uh, whether you meddle or not. Um, the, obviously, the greatest number of points determines the winner. Um, and um, any any ties that we have that we can't break numerically will be uh, will be basically done by total points in the bucket. Uh, if we still can't break it, we look for total points scored by colored balls. And then, uh, if we still can't break the the tie, then we use the quality of the team practice log, which um, basically I reiterate: the more effort you put into putting that practice log together, the better. So now. I'd like to open it up to any questions. I don't know how many of you are new or how many of you have been uh, through this before, uh, since I can't see you all. Uh, but I, I, I kind of like to open it up uh, to whoever wants to ask a question. Don't be afraid. There's no such thing as a silly question because uh, there's things we find out that we didn't realize. There, uh, so there's no such thing as a silly question. So fire away. Or, or, or put it in the chat, I guess. That would be the other way. Hi, my name is Jason. Okay. Um, I have a question about the, um, this is the first year for me, so okay. um, I don't know what the impound is. Okay, impound is at the beginning before, uh, usually when they have the, the announcements and, and they get all the teams together, before that happens, um, you guys, bring your devices, data sheets, balls, and, and the team that's going to shoot to impound, which is where you check your device in. We inspect it to make sure it meets all of the requirements that are, are outlined in the rules. And then we ask the, the kids to, to set their, uh, the, uh, their equipment in our impound area, okay? Okay. Uh, we check them in. It means we know that you've come in, you've checked in, we have your device. Then you're off to free to go about what you need to do, other events or whatever. And then on a first come, first serve basis, when the event, our event opens up, you come and as we get eight, eight to teams, if 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 we can get that many, uh, we line them up, just remind them of some of the basics and let them go. But the impound is basically at the beginning, uh, before you go to the announcement to the, in the gym, uh, you know, on welcoming everybody, the welcome portion of the extravaganza. Uh, okay. So it's important that, and usually the, the impound times are on the schedule. So you want to get there before, because usually there's a, a, the line starts to form fairly quickly. And there's usually three or four of us that try to uh, check the devices, make sure they have the right amount of balls, they have their data sheets, whatever tools they need. Uh, and then we ask them to set it aside behind our, our, uh, our barrier. Then they're free. Then they can leave it without fear that anyone's going to be tampering with it. Basically. Okay. <clears throat> the other question I had is, um, can can the device be can can you use compressed air? Um, th that question came up. I believe we can. Uh, we we allowed that last year, if I'm not mistaken, on it like in like a small one of those small canisters that you might get for fizzy machines. I think. Right. Um, you're not going to have the ability to have a compressor that plugs in or something like that because you're in a big gymnasium and we just don't have the, you know, we wouldn't have access to outlets uh, to allow that. So that basically everything has to be self-contained within the device itself. Just no gasolines, no uh, 
lead acid batteries where you might cause a spill that causes damage or, or splash in people's eyes or something like that. Springs have been used, rubber bands have been used, uh, compressed air was one idea. Um, but and it, you, you need to find some method to impart enough energy to fire the, uh, to move the ping pong ball through the air to the target. And as I said, eight meters is the, uh, is the longest distance you you will be expected to shoot okay so is are most of these devices uh unique or is there is there a commonality between them? um well we've seen handheld devices we've seen uh, devices that you utilize some sort of a rubber band to propel uh, a ping pong ball through a tube. We've seen them where they simply uh, uh, the rubber band allows them to to uh, throw the, the 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 ping pong ball, you know, with a cup, kind of like a a slingshot, but a little bit more sophisticated. Um, you can use basically any kind of fasteners, any kind of materials. Uh, we had one year, I think we made the, uh, some of the units out of card, uh, corrugated cardboard was, uh, was some interesting, but I've seen, like I said, we've seen plastic tubes. I've seen kind of slingshotty looking things. Uh, it's kind of whatever comes to the imagination. If, if you have any questions and you're not certain that something would be appropriate or you're not sure, Go to the website, ask the question on the uh, on the link to ping pong, and we'll always get back to you within a couple of days, and we will publish for everyone an answer to anybody's question, probably up until a couple of days before the actual extravaganza, uh, the, the, the big day in May. So feel free to ask any kind of question. Like I said, there's no such thing as a silly one. We learn we learn in this thing too. Uh, I also encourage people not to think too, too much like an, a lawyer trying to, you know, uh, we, we try to keep things pretty basic. But uh, if, if there's, if there's, like I said, if there's a question that you have that you're, you're just not sure or you don't understand something in the rules, maybe you missed it, feel free to, feel free to post it online and, and we'll respond uh, fairly promptly. Great. Thank you so much for all the information. And your name is Richard? Okay. Uh, Rashad. R A C H A D. Yep. Okay. Thank you so and much, Rashad. You're welcome. I see Any that. other questions? Caitlin has a question. I think she has her hand raised. You can just unmute yourself and ask a question, or if you want yep. to ask in the chat, that's fine too. Go ahead. Uh, you can speak, or or does she not have a microphone? Maybe. Um. What does track A and track B mean? Like when you join the meeting, what does track A and track B? Track A and track B. I think, if I'm not mistaken, that's referred to the A teams and the B teams, is it not? And I believe it's only the A teams um, that participate in the actual... Uh, well, I think they all participate, but the B teams generally don't get ranked. The A teams... Uh, the A teams do, as I understand it. Uh, if I'm if I'm thinking along the same lines as uh, came up, because they had A, B, I think we even had some C and D teams when we had the trial um, uh, school uh, practice sessions. They had multiple multiple teams for the same event, but I believe only the A team, uh, unless that's changed actually goes to the to the big day in may and i can get a clarification on that uh from from the uh, the lead uh, john uh, from john ogden uh, and and post that for you i'll write that question down D does that sort of answer your question or am i yeah, yeah? all right I'll, we'll post something online as a clarification I see that Anthony has his hand raised. If you want to okay. and ask a question. Okay. Uh, yeah. How are you? Thank you. I just want to um, get some clarification, clarification on the launch line. Um, yes. In the rule, section eight says it will be marked on the floor at any of the half meter intervals, four to eight yeah. meters. So, so are they going to have to shoot from each one of those intervals, or is that just setting 
um, the standard to where you will pick. We won't know. It'll be randomly picked the day of the competition. Correct. But they need to prepare for each one of those so they have the, yep. the correct angle, velocity, distance, yep. everything for each one of those increments. So correct. we're ready to adjust accordingly from e for any, at any one of those. Is that clear? Correct. That is that is correct. You when you do your correct. practice, you're going to gather data that I'll, you know. And the only data, like I said, you need to keep are the ones that actually get you accurately to those half meter increments between four and eight meters. Perfect. Uh, okay. And uh, just as a, a quick aside, we've had a couple of instances in the past where people would say, well, how many how many feet and inches is that? And I said, well, <laughs> the whole purpose is you have to learn to measure in meters in this event. Absolutely. Yep. So uh, I'm, I'm reiter reiterating that now because we do everything in meters on, on this particular event. Uh, but yes, you'll be assigned uh, based on whether I have my coffee or not, I'll pick in my, in my head that for that particular event, what to, what distance we'll have, and then we'll remind them of the distance when they're set up to uh, uh, shoot and uh, then go. Um, something I did forget to mention, once we start shooting, they have basically four minutes to shoot all 15 ping pong balls, which we have found is pretty adequate amount of time. We do tell them to relax and take a deep breath and, you know, take their time to set up and make sure everything is, is good before they shoot. But we've found that to shoot the 15 balls in, in four minutes is, is more than adequate. Very rarely have uh, uh, one or two teams maybe uh, lost track of things and they, they, they shorted themselves a couple of balls because they ran out of time. But for the most part, it will end earlier than the four minutes uh, before we start scoring primarily because of all the excitement that the kids have. <laughs> uh, next question from uh, VB. Vijay, Mr. Rasha, Vijay. thank you. Can you hear me well? Yeah? Yes. Yeah, but first of all, I want to thank Jason also. He asked the question what I had in my mind. Okay. I, I joined a couple of minutes late after you started. Okay. I have the same documentation that you went through on the screen. Yes. And there is something approximate time, 30 minutes. What is this about? Uh, the 30 minutes is basically uh, from the time, let's say, eight teams come into the gym and we say, okay, we've got eight teams. We, we will have set up uh, the ability to shoot eight teams at a time. We want more teams to be shooting at the same time because then it's crazy. There's balls flying everywhere in the gym. We like we, That's kind of part of the, the, the charm of the event. So from the time the eight teams check in and we start reminding of the rules telling them where to go get their impound, where to set up, uh, getting them through setup, telling them to start shooting. Uh, then we score and then we tell them to put their, you know, uh, in the meantime, they're putting their devices. All of that time, all of those uh, uh, activities are encapsulated in that half an hour. So you shouldn't be there more than half an hour typically for a shoot. Yeah, yeah that's why I want to draw out some clarity there. Are they building the unit there on the floor? No, 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 no. no. You're okay. build, no, no. You build the unit at home. You're yep. practicing uh, either at school or at home, yep. the, all the different distances, gathering data and putting it in your data charts for the four, four and a half, five, and so on up to eight meters. So you know you're prepared for whatever distance I pick that day, right? Yep. Yeah, so all is, of that happens off-site before any any shoots. Yeah, th this is my first one, first my first yeah. child going in. But yeah. I teach DI. There's another event called distraction imagination. I have prescribed strict regulations. I have to do everything on the field. I saw the 30 minutes. That's why I want to make sure that 30 minutes is not to build the device. No, 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 no. You it you have pre-built, pre-built. Yeah, they have five minutes, or uh, four minutes. So, four, four minutes from the time we say balls. go, but yeah. the, the collective from the time they enter the gym, get set up, shoot, scored, and are out, it should be no more than half an hour. Okay. Total. And, then, and then you all answered one other question compared to last year. I saw that this year, even though we can't use the electrical outlets, but Correct. you did answer compressed air. I'm thinking about the paintball, air, comp air tanks to use for propulsion. So okay. That's allowed I mean, I may get a clarification. We, we, I may talk to the, the powers that be to get a clarification because obviously there's, uh, 
how should we I say understand. different powers yes. and we don't want to we want to make sure that they're not using something that might potentially be a, a little bit too dangerous for elementary schoolers yeah so i will i will get a clarification on on that too i was going to post that question then i thought i will wait for your uh, conversation here today and ask uh, okay. because that's the route i am taking but i want to make okay. sure that maybe considers dangerous some institutions because yeah i, I think some of the smaller ones are probably okay i can't imagine you bringing in a very large no. cylinder plus whatever you use has to be has to have enough charge to run the 15 balls if you run out you're kind of out of luck unless you have two smaller ones that you can load maybe that might be something but i'll i'll do a double check and post a response on the on the website uh, thank you mr Rashad. okay thank you uh, any other questions well we got a quiet crowd this year usually i get at least a dozen <laughs> Are are most of you uh, repeat uh, repeat uh, or return return participants, or are we kind of split down the middle? I'm new, but I've watched it before. Okay. <laughs> yeah, any, negative. No. any any uh, any uh, questions or uh, any surprises that you've heard? That you can use a, uh, batteries and things. I didn't realize that. Well, I mean, it's I throw that out there because uh, maybe there's a way to build something, some electrical device that requires a battery that might uh, cause a, a solenoid to trip a, a pin that would fire into the ping pong ball and shoot it forward uh, in some manner. Uh, again, th this thing is open to some of the simplest looking devices I've seen. I, I will say that when you build a device, make sure it's not too wobbly and, and, and loosey-goosey loosey because accuracy plays a, a part in being able to hit the, the target accurately. And you want to get as many uh, ping pong balls into either the pool or the, or the bucket as possible. So it, you don't want the thing drifting off way too far to the left or the right or um, and then you know the practice allows you to get your distance but the accuracy of the build of the machine uh, gives you maybe a little bit more side to side uh, ability to control kind of drifting uh, away from the target sort of thing so okay. thank you uh, any other questions Oh, this is a light. Uh, I, have, I have one question. I'm sorry. Um, That's okay. You have a, you know the, you know the environment that this will be in. Um, will it just be in a closed gymnasium? It will be. It will be in uh, the larger gym uh, on a wood floor, uh, which is one of the reasons we ask you to put some sort of either pads, you know, felt pads or rubber pads or a sheet, you know, a rubber sheet to protect the floor. In, uh, sometimes. Uh, these devices get fastened with screws and, and nuts and bolts and things, yep. or just uh, say a rough base of plywood. And a couple of years past, we had some uh, uh, instances of very bad damage to the, uh, the gymnasium floor, which caused them to have to do an insurance claim, which was uh, expensive. So we resorted to requiring that all the devices have some sort of a, a pad on the bottom, which actually also will allow your uh, device perhaps not to slip on the polyurethane floor as much so yeah, there's correct. a chance that the device kind of goes off you know is pointed in the wrong direction sort of thing especially if if the device has uh, uh, I've seen somewhere they use uh, bungee cords and those usually have a uh, provide a lot of kick which causes the the devices sometimes to jump so sometimes they can change angle or jump forward, cross the line, and then we have to kind of encourage them to, to pull the device back behind the line. So uh, anyway, uh, anything else? Once they, um, once they do shoot, say they, yeah. they, they hit the first shot and there is a little recoil and it does move a little bit, are they able to, are the students allowed to adjust, readjust oh, to? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. As long as... As long as the device, the, the balls, the students, and all their data stuff are always behind the line fully, they can adjust any way they need to while they're shooting. There's, okay. there's no limitation on that uh, at all. 
All right, thank you. So, uh, the one thing I would uh, I, I will make a quick clarification to that. We don't recommend that the students have to stand on the wrong side of the line to hold their device down uh, because there's too, in my opinion, there's too much of an opportunity for somebody to get hit with, uh, let's say, a misfire or something like that. Plus, they're on the wrong side of the line, and the requirement is that everything is behind the line uh, once they start shooting. Uh, I mean, if they have to stand on their device, they can do it from the side. That's not a problem because they'll be behind the line. Uh, any other questions? If I, I would strongly recommend that you download the current rules from the website. Uh, I have found in the past some people use like last year's rules. And uh, when we were doing things like changing materials and stuff in, in some of the uh, previous years, they didn't realize that. And they came to uh, the first uh, practice session with, the wrong, with, uh, with an incorrect device, for example. So I encourage you to print your uh, a copy of the rules for you, go through them. Uh, and then if you still have questions, go on the website, post them on the ping pong propulsion uh, 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 chat. And uh, uh, we, again, we'll respond within at least a day or two uh, for everybody to see the responses as they come in. And that'll happen right up till probably a day or two before the actual event. Any other questions? Thank you. Ooh, okay. I see Bree has her hand oh, raised. Okay. Hi, sorry. Um, this popped right in my head right when you're getting ready to end. Um, are we allowed to bring um, like extra supplies? For instance, if we're using, say, a rubber band or something elastic like that, if we impound an extra one, say if it snapped during competition, that the kids could hurry up and within the Ab time if they're able to fix it real quick. Yep. Absolutely, as long as okay. yeah, we've had equipment failures, uh, one or two teams they kind of fell apart when their equipment failed and they didn't know what to do, so they just they they kind of gave up. But we've had other teams that all of a sudden said, "Oh, wait, we can do this," and they you know they'd hold on to one end of the rubber band if it wouldn't stay down and. They would fire their device and they would improvise uh, using the device and they managed to get all their their ping pong balls off so yes if you if if you if the machine is set up where only one uh for example a rubber band or a bungee or something like that is uh -huh. used, bring more as long as they're impounded they're considered part of that device and if you need a tool okay. to reset it just check that tool in as part of again as part of, it becomes part of the device because okay. it's needed Perfect. to operate the device. Okay. Uh, Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, KN, who's KN? Somebody has their hand up. Um, is there like any points counting in ping pong propulsion? Any po points counting? Well, each, each ball um, is. Uh, the white ball is it has a value. The the, the orange balls have a, a, a higher value. The striped orange ball has an, the highest value. And then depending on whether you hit the pool or the bucket, those values wherever they whatever color ball goes in there is multiplied either by nine or twenty five, depending on what it, whether it hits the pool or the bucket. Then once we score, we'll know how many white balls you got or orange balls you got, or if you got the stripe in one of them, um, uh, we'll record how many of balls, each of the balls uh, you have and where it, and in which container it landed. The computer does all the tabulation, uh, which is why we can't give you a score while they're on the floor. It would just be too cumbersome and take too much time. Uh, but yes, each, each ball has a value and, and depending on what, to what part of the target it hits, that kind of, uh, you know, if it hits the pool, let's say, uh, versus the, the thing, uh, the, 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 the bucket, the bucket obviously has a higher point value multiplier, so it would give you a higher score the more balls you get into, say, the bucket, for example. Now, anything that hits the floor outside the pool, basically, is, it's a dead ball, it's zero. 
So that's that's where the accuracy of the of the shooting uh, is important. Uh, the more balls you get into the target area, the higher your score is going to be. Does that answer your question? Yeah, and I also have another one. Okay. How do you know which ball's yours when you shoot? Um, because you put your your team number on two side if, uh, on the ping pong balls, you got to mark. Let's say your team number ten. You write ten on one side of the ball, and then you rotate it 180 degrees. You write ten on the other side of the ball. And when we collect all the balls, there's going to be eight teams, uh, all with different number with eight different numbers. We sort all the, all the balls we collect out of the pool and the bucket, put them into containers for the all the nines go into one into team nines container 26 if your team 26 goes into the 26 container then we determine which how many of the white orange and uh, orange with a stripe balls you have mark those on the score sheet and from the score sheet the computer we enter that into the computer and then they do the final tabulation but it's because you've numbered each of each of the 15 balls that you have has to have your team number on it. That's how we determine. Does, does that make sense? Yeah, and when you get in the pool and if you get in the bucket, does that like still count as a value of points? Oh, yeah. it, it, whether you go into the pool or the bucket, you, you've just acquired a point. It's just a question of which ball went in and what located did it go in the pool or the bucket obviously the bucket is valued has a higher multiplier than the pool but any any of your balls that enter either of those two parts of the target get points anything outside the pool gets nothing so you, basically you're trying to hit as many times as you can the best you can do is to hit every 15 balls into the bucket for example that would get you the highest score OK, uh, then if you hit everything into the pool, you'd be scored slightly lower. But any combination of that, you know, some in the pool, some in the bucket, that that that's we, we figure all that out on the score sheets and that determines your final score. Is that a, a good enough answer? Yes. OK, anything else? I see that Anthony has a question, but just a reminder, there's three minutes.